Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged and to my step-by-step guide into how you're going to make this Lord's Prayer cross with a base. Now, this is my file on Etsy, and the link will be in the description. There are plenty of other files that are uh, very similar, but I just did not, first of all, I wanted one that was directly goes into Lightburn with layers. And second of all, I just didn't like the way that the bases came together. They were very difficult to adjust and if we're doing larger or smaller ones. So in this file, I have made a smaller one and a larger one. I think those are pretty good sizes, as you can see here on Lightburn. Um, this one is about 15 inches, 15.5 inches tall. And the reason is that because you got 15.75, uh, you know, I get my wood from Craft Closet. So it's very consistent. I'll leave a link down below for that as well. And there's a way to get a discount on your first order or whatever. I made a video on it. Um, it's very consistent, and so I'm able to just put the wood in. I know what the size is. If you have a 16-inch height wood, 15.75, this is going to work great. And it's about 11 inches wide. So you're going to have your 12-inch piece of wood, and that's going to work great too. Now, I did include also a smaller version, and, I, you know— it's about 10 inches high, so in case you're using a 12 by 12 or something like that, it will work fine. And I wouldn't go too much smaller. Reason being, some of these small words in here are going to end up, you know, once it gets way too small, you're going to have burn, burn marks. It's just not going to work super well. You can try it as small as you can on your laser. It just depends on the laser and uh, how perfectly you have your settings. So that's the first thing I'm going to say. Settings are everything. So you're going to get this file. You're going to download it, unzip it. And before you cut, you're going to need to do your cut test. Now, I'll leave a link to a making your own cut test uh, by Louisiana Hobby Guy if you want to follow that. If not, you know, there are plenty of cut tests out there. Just make sure that on this particular wood that you're going to use that you're sure everything is going to cut out perfectly. And I'm using five millimeter hardwoods for this. I've got what, this is walnut one, which is wonderful. Everybody loves walnut. Uh, and the surprise for me, the best one I found is a white oak. I had never found a reason to use white oak before, but this just looks so nice for the one that's standalone. Because I also make them to hang on the wall. I'll put a picture up of that. And it's just flat, right? It hangs right here between the I and the T. So right here. And it just hangs flat on the wall and it looks be beautiful. Well, you're often not going to have the white oak one for that because it kind of blends in with most walls, white. But for the standalone, fantastic. Well, the walnut and sapele, different woods like that looks just so beautiful. I'm telling you. People love this file. I have never been able to keep them in stock. I mean, it's the first thing that sells on my table. And generally, the people who buy them are very generous and very nice. So it's kind of a win-win. As I said, this is a step-by-step -step video. So the first step, of course, is to download the file, to unzip it, and to put it into Lightburn. Now it should look just like this when you put it in the Lightburn. That's why I made the file this way. I wanted it to be very easy. So the only thing you got to do is figure out your settings. And so go ahead and put those in. Now, what is this green one at the top? And I meant it to cut out first. That is just a line to show you when you put it into the base exactly so that you're even. Uh, no other file has done that, and I just figure that's, that's a nice way to go. You want to know that this is even, and it will fit very nicely to the bottom of a 5 millimeter piece of wood. If you want to make this to where uh, it doesn't have a base, all you got to do is turn this green line into a red line. And of course, it's going to cut this part off, and then you're going to have just a regular cross. The other green line is just a mark. 
so that you know where to put the base onto as well. So everything is done to be very easy. Once you get your settings right, that's all you need to know. Now, say you don't have a five millimeter piece of wood. Say yours is a six millimeter. What you're going to do is you're going to only choose this particular thing. Everything else can stay the same. As long as you're going to be, yeah, everything else is going to stay the same. So this is going to be the primary thing anybody's going to change with this file. So you're going to go up to your left and you're going to make sure that this little lock button is unlocked. Because if you change it without that, it's going to change both the height and the width, which isn't going to be the worst thing ever. If you did that, it's not going to stop it, anything. But what you're going to do is get, get a set of calipers or something and measure and make sure that the piece of wood, you know exactly how big it is. 0.18 inches is how big this piece of wood is, which is about five millimeters. Yours might be in millimeters. So if you wanted to change that, you just change that value, say yours is 0.2 millimeters. Uh, sorry, say yours is 0.2 inches. That's all you got to change. It just changed the thickness of this, nothing else. Now you're at 0.2 millimeters. You could click the, the lock back on or not. That's up to you. And now when you cut this out, <clears throat> this whole thing should fit in the base perfectly. Now, if for some reason you cut this out and it doesn't fit into the base, do not make the whole thing over again. <laughs> all you got to do is remake this base. So you'll just change this to make it whatever file size you need to. I think most of you get that, but I just wanted to explain it just in case. So I think maybe one of the easiest things to do would be just print out the bases first and just take this side of the base to make sure it fits into the hole so you know. Or take a piece of scrap from that wood that you did from the cut test. So with that being done, now you've got your testing You've got your lines. I what I did is I separated the cross from the base as far, but they're the exact same uh, settings because you're still cutting. But I wanted to do them separate in case you wanted to turn off the cross and just make the bases, or if you wanted to turn off the bases and just make the cross. I would suggest running air with everything on this, but you could turn it off for the line if you wanted to. Now, after you're done cutting it out, and they cut out, once you get your settings right, you can cut these out over and over and over again. And I, in this particular time, I'm using a, a larger, you know, 100 plus watt CO2 laser. That is not necessary. I have made so many of these on a 400 by 400 diode laser. In fact, I'm passing this file off to Rich, Louisiana Hobby Guy, and he's going to show me a trick. So... Stay tuned for that. Probably be like on a laser maker's realm or something. I will let you guys know in one of the future videos. But uh, I would have a shop vac on hand. It makes lots of little tiny pieces that get left behind. And you can just suck those up with a shop vac so that you can get on to making the next one. So once it's all cut out, uh, go ahead and make sure that it fits properly. You're not going to want to put this in and out a ton of times because you eventually will wear it and it won't go in and out. It will go in and out a little too easily. So just go and make sure that it fits correctly. Okay. And then what you need to do is sand it. So don't put it all together. Again, this is step by step. Some of this might just be like, yeah, yeah, I get it. But you know, I wanted to go step by step. So I sand the back and the front because sometimes people are going to see the back. And so you should have it looking, you know, semi-nice. I also spray the front and back. Because if you, you know, or finish whatever you're going to use. I happen to use lacquer on these because I just love the way lacquer looks. But I first lacquer the back. And then I wait for that to dry. And then I do multiple coats on the front. Just because I want to make sure that the moisture level and everything is on both sides somewhat equally. It's going to keep it really flat uh, in case it gets into some sun or some heat or whatever. It's not going to cause any warpage. So I've sanded it and then I've finished it. Uh, take your time. 
there's no reason to be in a rush for sanding and, and uh, you know, making sure all the dust is off. And you don't need to get crazy. I'm not using 1600 grit or anything like that. I think like a 320 or something is fine. I put enough coats of lacquer on top of this thing where it just really makes it nice. Before I do my last coat of lacquer, I actually, when it's completely dry, I actually rub it down with a crumpled up piece of paper or crumpled up uh, paper bag. And it really seems to end up making a really nice finish on it. I don't know why, but it does. And then I just spray my last coat of lacquer, let it dry, done. So now you can go ahead and put this in the base. Now, it should just go all the way to the bottom of this first piece and just and the line should just disappear. And then it's ready to go ahead and make sure you glue it and then you can glue it down to the base. Now, you could just leave it like that, but I would also suggest maybe that you put some felt on the bottom of th th your base, and you could add, also add some little rubber feet or whatever just to make it a little bit nicer, but nothing else is actually required for it to work fine. Again, I would probably finish both sides of your base just to make sure that it doesn't warp especially if it's going to be sitting on anything hot. It's really not a difficult process once you get it down. You can make these over and over and over again, and I'm telling you, your family or friends' family or whatever, they're going to see this thing. Everybody's going to want it. Uh, I also make them, I, you know, I cut off where the green is. Like I told you before, you could just cu cut this off into the cross. I use the small size that's included in this, to make a framed version. So I use an 11 by 14 frame that I get from Michael's. It's, uh, you know, a shadow box type frame. Uh, they come two into a pack. I'll try and put some pictures up. And I, I get it at Michael's. They're almost always on sale. I get them for like seven, six or seven dollars a piece. And I paint the crosses gold or white. And then I put velvet behind it because velvet just makes a really nice black it's really hard to get something really black, even if you paint it. It's not going to be that rich, true black. But I go to Hobby Lobby uh, every other week. They have a 40% off sale on the velvet, and I just buy some, and you cut it out and stick that behind. I use some um, spray glue, and I spray glue the fabric to it. Then I cut it out. Uh, then I spray glue the back of the cross, and then I... Put that on, you're pretty much done. Just put it back together, and I'm telling you, people go crazy for these. They're absolutely gorgeous, and it has become one of my main sellers when it comes to craft shows and church events and different things. They're really, really versatile and really, really popular. So I highly suggest, please do it. Please modify the file. Pass it on to other people. I don't care. And, you know, it's easy to modify this file and do whatever you need to do with it and make something cool. In fact, if you make something or change it or do something different, please let me know. I, I'm all for people going out there and making things better. Uh, frankly, I just love lasers. <laughs> and this gives me the opportunity to continue doing that. So that's it for this one. I will see you soon. Love y'all.